Hey guys, Wolf Wengler, and I'm going to show you how I check valve spring pressure. Um, first thing i got to do is take off this fitting here. This is where I pick up vacuum for the suction gauge inside the car. The car is running a vacuum pump, so everything is under vacuum. Once I get the nuts off, I can just run around with the magnet and grab the washers. Um, I'm going to look at number three. So this would be the exhaust and the intake for number one. And here's the exhaust for number three. The valve is closest to the pipe, so it makes sense. Three. And the procedure is IOEC. You set the intake when the exhaust is opening, IO, and you set the exhaust when the intake is closing, EC. So you bump the engine around and you watch the valve, you watch the rocker arm as it pushes down on the valve. And when it starts to come up, that's when the valve is closing. And when it just starts to push down on the valve, um, that's when the valve is opening. So we're going to set, we're going to check the intake first, and we're going to make sure that the exhaust is closing. So I'm going to bump it around. There, yeah, the exhaust is pretty close to down. Now watch the exhaust just starting to come up. And when the exhaust is closing, the intake is loose. The intake valve is on the lowest part of the cam. I-O-E-C. Remember that little mnemonic. Intake when the exhaust is opening, exhaust when the intake is closing. So here's the piece. This is a Moroso valve spring tester and you hook the bottom end of it on the rocker arm and you're pulling on it and as you pull on it then you're putting pressure on the valve and you see how much pressure it takes on the spring scale here um, to move the valve. I use this. There's a much better tool. It's made by LSM. Um, this one is like, when I bought it, it was 75 bucks. The LSM one's about 230 or 40 bucks. The LSM one's got a dial indicator on it. It's much better. But what you're really trying to do here is just get a baseline and keep tabs of it. Um, see if anything is changing. It's not, you're not trying to get exactly the right pressure to the pound. You're just keeping an eye on everything, making sure that nothing's changing. If you're starting to lose spring pressure on a particular cylinder, well, then it's time to investigate a little further. Maybe then you want to take that spring off and check it on a bench tester, um, compare it to something else. But the key is when you start out with a new set of springs, um, after you've got everything set up and you've installed the springs, check your spring pressure and then you've got a baseline. It's going to lose maybe 6% or so after they set in the first time and then your spring should stabilize and you want to just keep an eye on them. If spring pressure is 500 pounds or 300 pounds or whatever the pressure is and it's starting to change, then you know. But you're checking the low end pressure, you're checking the opening pressure you're not checking the um, pressure of the spring at full compression. So this is when the spring starts to open. Um, these springs that are on here are pack 12, 27 springs, and they're about 200 pounds um, on the seat before they start to open, and they're about 500 pounds um, when they open. So these springs have been set a little bit looser. I like them less than 200 pounds. Um, I really want to be about 180. And so here's the way it works. I'm going to check the number three intake, and you can see there's a little um, cutout on the bottom of this tool that just fits right around where the push rod is. Just goes on like that, pushes on the top, and then as I pull on the handle here, it's going to make that valve open. See that valve is just starting to open and you got to get a feel for when it happens when it's just starting to move right there it's just starting to move and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to look at the gauge and I'm about 180 
180 pounds, a little bit more than 180 pounds, and that's where I want to be. That spring is good. Pretty easy. Easy peasy. Pulling on the handle, reading the gauge. Watching the spring as it starts to move. Okay, I got the intake. I'm going to bump it around now to the exhaust. I-O-E-C, so we want to be watching the intake valve to begin to close for the time that we want to measure the exhaust valve. E-C, set the exhaust when the intake is closing. So, there's that intake, and we're going to bump it around. It hadn't moved, now the intake is starting to go down. Intake is all the way down. Now it's just started to come up, and that's when I want to check the exhaust. Exhaust is loose. If I was checking my valve lash, I'd be checking it there too. So here I'm on the exhaust, and I'm getting just, there's that little bit of move. And there I am, just there's that little bit of move, and I'm right there. Pretty easy. I-O-E-C, that's how you set your valves, and it's the same way that you measure your spring pressure. I really didn't need to measure anything, I'm just doing this so you guys can see how the procedure goes. The key is to have everything written down, to have a logbook. Um, I was in aviation for a while. All airplanes have logbooks. The logbooks stay with the airplanes when the plane is sold. You see all the work that's been done on the plane that's been signed off, all the airworthy directives, all the different things that happen. You want the same kind of thing for your car so that you can write down your spring pressures when you check them. You can write down your valve settings when you check everything. And then the next time you go around, you can go back and you can look at these settings that you had recorded and you can see if anything is changing. You can see if little spring pressure is going away. Um, this is important with a solid roller cam because you really don't want too much looseness in the lash because at a certain point that nice little roller turns into a hammer and it just starts beating on the cam and beating itself apart. So you want to make sure your springs are in good condition. And you want good springs. I use the pack springs. I said before they're 1227s. Um, it's a high-end spring. You want to use those, a pack spring, or you want to use the Iski Gold Tool Room Springs. We're talking, we were talking uh, $400 for a set of springs. God knows, today they might be $600, but good springs are the key. Bad springs, um, pressure goes away. When I was running the 294 solid cam in this car, I could tell it would start losing power at the top end and I knew right away mm, valve springs are going away put a new set of springs on and it was fine but back then I was running comp springs um, they're crappy springs they lasted for a season or so and um, I learned the benefits of better parts so that's the deal um, there's a, a box of Esky. 905 plus springs. Those are good. Not quite enough spring pressure. There's the ones that are in there now, the PAC 1227. There you go. That's all I got.